I purchased this workbench about 10 years ago. It's fine, but it's not big enough for a lot of projects. I said to myself, hey, wouldn't it be cool if I had a workbench that I could move around? You know, with two people, I could take it outside. You know, I could work on all my stuff. I could put a giant vise on it. Uh, that giant vise is over there. I could put a giant vise on it and, uh, you know, clamp stuff down like my crash bars and fix them, repair them as needed, should I crash. You know, gee, who would have thought that would have happened? Um, anyway, uh, this is a, a fairly nice workbench. Uh, it is super tough. Uh, it weighs a couple hundred pounds. Um, it's not going to move. Um, when I put my uh, crash bars over there on that vise, uh, that was the first time I actually bent something that actually moved the table. The order of assembly was pretty simple. The first thing I did was I built the top part of the table and I just had it on the floor and then I put the panels on and stood on it to make sure it was pretty strong. Then I built the legs. You'll see here I have T-squares, triangles, and a yardstick. I was able to do the initial assembly of the table using this hardware and this tool. It was really pretty easy. Only when I got into the heavier drilling for the larger bolts did I really want to use a uh, corded drill. I could have done the whole table using this simple drill gun. The way I built the legs is I just took one 2x4 and attached it to a 2x6. Then I ran a bead of glue down here and screwed the pieces together from this side. Once I was sure that everything was square, the entire length, and that this whole thing was straight, then I cut the leg to length on the inside so I could put the table on top of part of the leg. I looked into different kinds of treatments and coatings. To be honest, a lot of the stains, uh, they're not 100% weatherproof. Uh, they will degrade over time. Uh, the one thing that I was 100% sure would never degrade is the polyurethane. For the legs, I did use some construction glue as well as yellow wood glue. Once it dried, I knew it was never going to come apart. Why would you want to use painter's tape to build something like a workman's table? Well, if you don't have a partner around to hold your parts together, um, you can hold them together with painter's tape. Screw them into place and then remove the tape. It's actually quite easy. There's absolutely nothing special about the materials used to build this workbench. The wood comes straight from the home store. The pine wood that's used here is structural pine that's used for stud work. The green wood is decking material. It's a different kind of wood that's pressure treated to keep the bugs away. This back corner is a very good example as to how this whole thing is assembled. Uh, I started with very, very narrow screws, the brass ones that uh, you may have seen earlier in the video. Then I went into the heavier lag bolts and then finally the longer bolts. You know, this bolt is long enough to go through one, two, three pieces of wood with a washer and a nut on the end. You can see how large these washers are, they're about an inch wide. So expect to have washers about that size, you know. I bought about a hundred of them and uh, that worked out very, very well. There's about six heavy bolts on this corner. Uh, I'd say there's about 12 on the back side of this and I'd say there's probably another eight of them on the front. There's about a hundred decking screws on the top alone and then maybe another hundred more just for the base. Gotta ask yourself, you know, after you get the, the drawing out and you've decided how big you want it and uh, what it's going to look like roughly, you know, what's the next thing? And the next thing is, is, you know, how are you going to put it together? What, what are the materials? It's, what are the fasteners, you know? And uh, 
A lot of the fasteners I chose were a lot like this one. So, you know, this is a, a lag bolt, uh, SPACs. Um, but, uh, I found that these lag bolts were a lot easier to screw in than, say, uh, these bigger SPAX bolts. So for ease of use, I went with the, uh, the more silver type lag bolt versus the, the thicker one. These lag bolts were really great for fastening wood to the ceiling. I didn't need something this strong. So what I did was I went with the uh, narrower lag bolts really worked out very very well. The next thing you want to do is go out and get some drill bits that match the lag bolts. You want to get two or three drill bits that are as wide as the top of that bolt so that when you drill the holes you can run this lag bolt in and it'll grab real firmly. So you can use that as your reference width for the drill bits you purchase. Along with the heavier bolts that I got, the heavier hardware, I, I got like, you know, about a hundred of these washers. So here's an example of a different size washer with a different code on it, AJC. If you have to drill through, say, two or three studs to attach them, you want to make sure that your drill bits are long enough. So you can see how long these drill bits are. You can see how it's built underneath. It's not all that terribly complicated. You can see here I just used some uh, angled wood on the corners. The rest of it is built pretty much like a floor or a deck. You know, over here on this side where the, uh, the vise is, it's a little reinforced. Uh, so, you know, I doubled up on the wood here. To give you a feel for the scale of the table, it, it's pretty big. Um, it takes two people to move, but I can swing it around by myself. It's certainly big enough that if I want to throw a wheel on here, that I can throw the rear wheel on here and work on the rear wheel, which is something I'm going to do this month. The last thing I did was put this front piece on, and I realized I had run out of wood. I didn't have a longer piece, so I just screwed two pieces together and, and ran that piece across. There's power over here, and uh, there's power over here. You probably watched this video all the way through because you are going to build yourself a work table. Get yourself some paper and figure out how big you're going to make it. Find a space in your garage and see if it'll fit there. This work table turned out to be really perfect. And the reason it's perfect is because I can move it around. When it doesn't fit in one spot, I can move it somewhere else and make it fit there. That's the trick, is to make stuff mobile. On a lot of workbenches, the mobility is locking wheels. Well, I can't stand locking wheels. If you've ever put any kind of leverage on a workbench and realized that your workbench is just skidded across the floor because the wheels don't have any grip, well, hey, you know, that's how things are. Build your workbench like mine. It won't move. All the screws and bolts can come from the home store. There is nothing special order here. One of the things you can do before attempting a workbench is try and make yourself a tool tower like this one. This goes from the ceiling all the way to the floor and has a variety of garden tools on it. One of my first projects was this motorcycle swing, but to be honest, a work table is a lot easier for a first project.